Welcome to the Electronics channel. In this video, I'm going to do a couple of examples with a general amplifier model. This right here is a general amplifier model and it consists of an amplifier that has an input impedance. It has some voltage gain AV that gets multiplied by the input voltage where the input voltage is taken across the Z in and it has an output impedance. And this model can then have an input source applied that itself is going to have some output impedance, which I'll call RS. And then the output of that general amplifier will be connected to some load. All right, here is my example. My amplifier model has a one kilo ohm input impedance. It has a 100 ohm output impedance and the voltage gain of it is 10 times. So AV is equal to 10. So this model of the internal voltage source is 10 times whatever voltage gets applied at the input of this amplifier. What is applied at the input of this amplifier is a 50 millivolt peak sine wave coming out of a source. So this is my VS through the 50 ohm output impedance of the source and then applied to the amplifier. It gets amplified and then the output of the amplifier goes through this 500 ohm output load. So the goal of this is to figure out what is the output voltage that we would expect in this circuit. The out is going to come from the combination of this input applied to the voltage divider at the input here and then getting multiplied by the voltage gain indicated by this voltage source inside the amplifier and then that voltage the voltage from that voltage source there will then get applied across the voltage divider between the 100 ohm output impedance and the 500 ohm load. So let's actually work through this step by step. Start off with, let's figure out what VN would be. VN is simply going to be this 50 millivolt signal, 50 millivolt peak signal, split between a 50 ohm output impedance and a one kilo ohm input impedance. So we're actually taking the resistance across that one kilo ohm resistor. So we will have 1000 or one kilo ohm divided by 1000 plus 50, that's my dividing ratio for the voltage divider network, and that works out to 47.62 millivolts. Then this dependent voltage source in there, which is equal to AV times VN. Well, I've said that AV is 10, so the 47.62 millivolt signal gets multiplied by 10, and we get 476.2 millivolts. Finally, we can look at V out, which will be the voltage divider here, the out is equal to what's coming from the source here, 476.2 millivolts, multiplied by 500 over 500 plus 100. That's my voltage divider ratio to give me an output voltage of 396.8 millivolts, and it's a peak. Because my input was a peak voltage, my output's going to also be indicated here with a peak voltage. Written out in one big long equation, I would have V out is equal to the 50 millivolt source peak that gets divided between the 1000 ohm resistor and the 50 ohm resistor, multiplied by the gain of the, the open loop gain of the amplifier, and then multiplied by the voltage divider at the output, 500 over 600. So there's three overall you can see the three effects well four effects kind of you've got an input That gets split between the input impedance and the output impedance of the source an internal gain open circuit gain of the amplifier and Then a voltage divider between the load resistor and the output impedance of the amp And of course when I plug those numbers in I will get the same number as I did as when I went step by step 396.8 millivolts peak. Now let's look at an example where I have two amplifier stages. My input is the same and my output is the same, but now I have two amplifier models that are identical, but they're cascaded back to back. So let's see how we would calculate the output voltage, which is the voltage here across the 500 ohm resistor. So again, I can do this stage by stage and then I'll show you another, another way that I could remodel this as a single amplifier stage. Okay, so VN1 will be the same as it was last time. It'll be this 50 millivolt signal 
times a thousand this voltage divider between the thousand ohm input impedance and the 50 ohm output impedance of the source. And that works out to 47.6 millivolts. Then the output of the first stage is the input to the second stage, Vn2. So Vn2 comes from this internal voltage source, which, is, which will be 10 times Vn, so 10 times 47.6 millivolts, Vn1. And then it's going to be applied to this voltage divider of 100 ohms and 1 kilo ohms. And we're taking the voltage across the 1 kilo ohm resistor, so we'll have 1,000 over 1,000 plus 100. And that works out to 432.9 millivolts. Now the second amplifier stage, I will have 10 times this VN2 that I just calculated split between the 100 ohm and the 500 ohm resistor, and I care about the voltage across the 500 ohm resistor. V out is equal to 432.9 millivolts times 10, or 10 times that, which is my internal voltage source there, then multiplied by 500 divided by 500 plus 100 for my voltage divider circuit right here. And that works out to 3.61 volts. So given an input of 50 millivolts through this amplifier circuit that I've got in two stages here and applied across a 500 ohm output, I get 3.61 volts at the output. Here is the same circuit again. And what I want to do this time is combine these two amplifier stages into one amplifier stage. And this one amplifier stage will have the same effect as the two because as we know about general amplifiers, they're just a, a model representing something inside. We don't really care what's inside of it. So if we can model the two stages as one stage, that makes the analysis that much simpler. So here's that new amplifier circuit. The input part's not going to change compared to the input part over here. If I have this 50 millivolt source applied through its 50 ohm output impedance, it's going to see the same one kilo ohm. Over at the output side, I have this 500 ohm load. When the signal comes out, it's going to go through the 100 ohms to the 500 ohm load, so my output impedance is going to be the same at 100 ohms. The difference between this circuit and this circuit is that I'm going to have something different for my internal voltage source, my dependent voltage source in there. And basically what it's going to be is the 10 times gain of this step multiplied by the 10 times gain of this step attenuated by the voltage divider here. So my AV is going to be 10 for the first gain multiplied by the voltage divider between the first stage and the second stage. So that's 1,000 over 1,000 plus 100 multiplied by the gain of 10 of the second stage. And that works out to an overall gain of 90.9. Now to confirm that I've done everything right, I can calculate what my V out is looking at the three different steps, the voltage divider at the input impedance, the voltage gain inside the amplifier, and the voltage divider at the output. So my V out is going to be 50 millivolts times 1,000 over 1,050 times 90.9 .9 for my voltage gain times 500 over 600, 500 plus 100 at the, for the voltage divider at the output. And when I plug those numbers into my calculator, lo and behold, my output voltage works out to 3.61 volts, just like it did when I went step by step through the two stage amplifier. So I hope these examples have put you a few steps closer to understanding general amplifier models. Thanks so much for watching. See you in the next one. An amplifier model, an amplifier model, Z in, Z out, and voltage gain, an amplifier model.